So po, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagpunta. Sobrang maraming salamat po. Um, maraming na pong nanood sa, um, sa side ko po. So, thank you so much po na pumunta po kayo. What about you, Lance? Uh, do you have any words for those of you, uh, for those who went here for you too? Yeah, I just, I'd like to thank all of my family members who uh, came tonight and suffered the traffic. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something about Hawaii. Uh, just so everybody knows, the Hawaiian language uh, was banned, the use of it in public schools until 1986, uh, when it almost became extinct. And the Hawaiian people have struggled uh, with tremendous difficulty to revive their language. And so this is one of the very few instances of seeing the Hawaiian language uh, on screen, uh, among all of the other things about Hawaiian culture that have been suppressed for so long. So I thank you very much for uh, allowing me to share it with all of you folks and uh, to get a little bit of an insight into how us Filipinos and Hawaii live um, in the context of, um, of being in Hawaii. So thank you very much. Okay, we have our first question, and I guess this is more for Lance, but what would you say is the major difference between uh, BLs in Hawaii versus BLs in the Philippines? Because we've had quite a number of them to hear. Um, sure, so, um, yeah, sorry, I'll take my mask. <laughs> um, so, so, boys love in general is about basically two male characters who basically unexpectedly fall in love. Um, that's what is generally BL. But I think here in the Philippines, it's used in a slightly broader context to just sort of refer to all LGBT content. Um, and I think one big difference between BL and LGBT is that, um, so LGBT is like a Western concept, and so storylines that are LGBT involve what is the meaning of my identity as an LGBT person. But in BL series, that's not a major factor. It's just about two individuals who fall in love and have to figure out their feelings and what that means. Um, and so I think that's the distinction. And so Hawaii's BL follows that more traditional, narrow um, idea of what BL is. So I don't know, sorry. I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, sorry. So I think uh, I agree with, with what Lance just said. And there was never a moment where Billy or Edmar were like, what am I or who am I? It was really just about that. Uh, maybe we can ask Jaron, what was that experience like for you when you were filming those scenes that made everyone go, woo? <laughs> what was that like for you? Um, that was like very um, nerve-wracking, um, especially, um, you know, Kaipo was very cute. Um, and <laughs> we just got to uh, figure out like how to break that ice, the boundary between us. So um, I guess during the first few um, weeks, I asked him to review the script. So that was my first move. And then, um, yeah, then we got along. So that was experience. And then um, especially like before shooting, I would, or he would ask me to pick me up from my home and then we would just uh, spend time together. We would um, watch um, Vice Gandas uh, funny videos, so does um, our bonding together. Uh, so yeah. Thank you. Okay, this one is for Lance. Which scene or moment did you first think of which led you to write this film? So actually, um, it's a very long story which I won't get into, but uh, we got a grant for a web series. This was supposed to be a web series. Um, and the writer, then it was supposed to be about water stream restoration, environmental issues in the context of Native Hawaiian struggles. Uh, and the writers kept quitting and disappearing. And we were gonna run, the, the period to do it was gonna run out. And so we asked for an extension and they said, oh, well maybe when you're ready, you can reapply. And so it was like J July of 2021, I completely cleared my schedule for six weeks and I wrote for 10 hours a day, six days a week. Um, and I wrote an eight part web series, this is, a condensed version of it. So after we did that, we got approval, and then we got approval for uh, to reduce it to a movie, which is what you saw. So um, everything except for the scene where Haku is like having his love thing with the teacher, 
all of it, every minute you can slice out and I can tell you somewhere in my life, it either happened to me or I saw it happen to somebody else. So it's all based on a true thing. It's just kind of shaken up and shuffled around uh, a little bit. So I don't know if that probably doesn't answer the question. I think that opens more questions. <laughs> I'm sure there are specific scenes that we would like to, to hear about. Um, for our audience, do you have any specific moments that you would like to ask about in the movie? Anything that you'd like to clarify? Okay, I see a hand up there. Okay, he'll run to you with a microphone. And I should actually say that the script was originally, it wasn't Tagalog, it was Iwakano. And when Kaylee did the casting call in Hawaii, we didn't get a single response. I mean, we sent it out to every family, everything, and nobody responded. And so after three weeks, I previously taught in the Iwakano language program, so this was very difficult for me. But we changed it to Tagalog, and then we translated everything into Tagalog. And within like within a day, we had like over 700 people um, want to participate. And of course, Jaron got picked for the role. Um, so I just want to say that that actually, when I wrote it, it was supposed to be in the Iwakano, and it got changed to Tagalog because nobody in the Iwakano community in Hawaii, I think they saw BL and they thought like soft porn or something like that. So nobody wanted to. I don't know. I mean, people were shy or whatever, and there's a huge amount of homophobia in the Iwakano community in Hawaii. So. Whatever the reason was, nobody responded, and so we ended up having to change the call again. I'm glad we did, so. Yay. Okay, so, ma'am, what is your name? Janet Remo. Janet, all right, what is your question? Uh, because I am in, I was so impressed with the way Uncle Jack danced. So, <laughs> what, what is the particular name of that dance? What do you call that dance? I believe the name of it is called Nani Kohibi, and it talks about the mountain Haleakala okay. on the island of Maui, which the uh, movie was based on. Uh, that was nice. Mahalo. Uh. Mahalo. 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 Uh, by the way, congratulations to all the participants and the actors. Okay, do we have any other questions? Oh. All right, I see a hand over there. Uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Raul Manuel of uh, Kabataan and uh, I commend the crew for uh, coming up with this uh, movie. At, and uh, gusto ko rin batiin lahat, Happy Pride Month! And, and, uh, and swak na swak yung topic of course na ating film. Ano? And uh, I believe na paraan din to para mas lalo nating uh, ma-promote di ba yung pagiging open-minded and uh, being more understanding of uh, the LGBT community uh, kahit saan man. So I'd like to ask now what inspired uh, I mean, the producer and uh, the other people involved in this film to choose such a topic, lalo na uh, sa Pilipinas, di ba? Well, we can say na tolerated yung LGBT, pero nagyan pa din yung uh, stigma and discrimination. So uh, ayun, ano po yung naging uh, inspiration behind uh, the theme of the movie? Um, so, as I said, the grant was to do, to talk about some issues that face Hawaii right now. Uh, but because I was the one that was doing it, and I'm a huge BL fan, um, I, and the reason why I'm a huge BL fan is because uh, when I was growing up, um, the representations of same-sex desire was, um, it was always problematic. There was always some problem. Um, I, a lot of people who watch this think that it's going to end with people falling off a cliff. Um, they, and so I felt like, well, if we're going to be doing this, why don't we just have a happy ending and like not problematize the fact that people fall in love and it happens to be two boys. Um, and so that was the perspective I took in the same way that, uh, you know, representing the use of the Hawaiian language, uh, which has also had a tremendous struggle uh, in Hawaii, uh, oh, close to extinction. The same type of thing is just to show what the present could be and what the future could be. Um, and I felt that the traditional BL way, which is there's a usually a happy ending, maybe not in the manga, but on you know the Thai BL and, and that sort of stuff, there's a happy ending, um, and that's not a major issue in the story. The major issue is, 
you know, basically different segments of the working class are fighting each other as opposed to uh, being in solidarity because of, you know, in, in Hawaii because of 150 years of American plantation cultures trying to set different cultures against each other. Um, and so that, that sort of was the, the flow or the, the push was to try to show that in a way that ended in a happy ending uh, and based on my own experiences and things I've witnessed. Thank you, good job. Um, sa akin naman po, um, when I was in middle school and high school, hindi po ako out. And super, super hirap. So yung role na to, parang ito na yung parang chance ko in another timeline na pwede kong may express yung sarili ko. Kasi when I was in high school, super hirap makipan hang out to um, kids. Kasi po, if I were to hang out with the LGBT, then natatakot po kung may masabi sila or majudge ako. However, kapag ripanhawa naman po sa mga straight people, parang ang hirap mag-pretend na gusto ko rin yung mga pinag-uusapan nila. So, yung character ni Edmore, parang bigay to na po talaga. Kaya, <laughs> kaya yun po, yung pinag-express uh, role ko as Edmore. Okay, we have time for uh, two more questions. So, we've got one over here. Where's our roving microphone? Oh, there you go. Hello. Hi. Um, Hi. Uh, Tina Clemente. Um, well, I, I learned so much. I like that I learned so many things. Um, I'm very fascinated about two things in particular. First, there's the language. No, so Lance mentioned earlier that it was banned until, did you say banned? It was banned until 1986. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious about, um, about the efforts to, to, to bring it back in the sense that it's not just um, maybe in schools. I mean, is it used as a language of instruction in schools? Is it? Is it? And then, and then how, I mean, what did the local government do to make sure that young people speak it again? So I, I, I just wanna know more about it. And then the other one, maybe I'll just mention the questions in one go. The other one that I'm fascinated about is the dance because in the, in the film, in the way that it was depicted, it's as if um, anybody can dance it, meaning it's very much part of the culture. It's not, it's not something that's, that you have to learn. I mean, you know what I'm saying in the context of the Philippines lands? Yeah, so, so, so yeah, so I'm, I'm just curious about um, a dance like that, if it's, if it's something that every Hawaiian family you know, can do, and and also the 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 male or the, the male orientation in, in the dance, because in the context of the Philippines, I can't. But anybody here is free to correct me, okay? Because I don't know anything. So, so I, I'm just wondering because in the Philippines, I can't recall any folk dance that's oriented towards a, a male. Right, a male kind of rendition. I mean, of course, there are males, but it's always with a partner. I'm, I'm rambling, so okay. yeah. Please. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I know we're going to wrap this up. The, the first uh, with the Hawaiian language is that uh, in 1978, there were a bunch of changes that were made to the Hawaii Constitution, and one of them was to make Hawaiian the official language, but it still took another eight years to change the law that banned the use of it in public schools. Um, and so that struggle continues. There are Hawaiian language immersion schools that teach Hawaiian as the, the primary language of instruction, but there's problems with funding, and there's actually a Supreme Court case a couple of years ago where the state was uh, determined not to comply with their constitutional obligations to teach children the Hawaiian language. So it, it, that's an ongoing struggle, but like Kaleo, the, the guy who plays Kona, he actually went to a Hawaiian language school from kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, so there are, yeah, there are people who now go to school again in their native language uh, in Hawaii, um, but it's a, it's a struggle. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And then I'll let Alakai answer the, the hula question, but I will say that there, the hula that you folks may be more familiar with in TV and film is that's, that's hula dance that is um, done for the American tourist gaze. Um, it's not, it's not what Hawaiians dance for each other. Um, and so he could talk more about hula in the context of Hawaiian families. I wanna say one thing about the song they danced to. So the state was going to realign the road there, the highway, 
and they were going to destroy a fishing spot and a surfing spot. And the community came down and they basically put up tents and parked themselves in front of the bulldozers. And uh, I represented them and we filed a lawsuit and the judge sat on our motion for preliminary injunction for weeks and they just basically stayed there for weeks. And finally the state decided not to uh, build there, not to destroy that, the fishing spot and the surf spot. And the song that they danced to is commemorating that win. So um, I mentioned that only because one of the things that Hawaiian music did as the language was going into decline was it continued to uh, keep memories of the community, of places, and of important events. And so that song, which was actually written very recently, uh, is, is an example of that. And I'll let Alakai answer the other part of your dance question. Okay, so if I remember correctly, the question had to do with kula being danced in family, or? Um, how is it transmitted in, in the Hawaiian community? Why is family? How do people learn it? How do people learn hula? Okay, well, I come from a learning of there being a kumu hula, which is a teacher of the hula. Um, throughout history, I can go deep in this, so <laughs> I can go very deep, but I'm trying to figure out how to. Throughout history, there has been people called kumu hulas who are the master of the hula. People go to this kumu hula to learn their style of hula, and from that point, throughout the student's lifetime, the kumu will choose from their students who should also become teachers of the hula. He's gonna become one of them very no, soon. <laughs> but in my, my thought process is, um, Kumu hula should technically be the only one to teach hula in a serious form. Um, can anybody in families do it? Definitely. Um, as far as I believe you questioning about only males dancing it? Or are you only seeing no? Yeah, she's not the gender issue. Okay, so the funny thing now, because more you see more women dancing, what happened was throughout when America came over and colonized and did all of that, it became a tourist attraction, and that was a sex symbol, and it made Hawaii, the girls were the pretty sexy girls dancing the hula. Hence the reason why more girls took over. What people need to realize is before, before it was banned, hula was mostly danced by men. Um, so yes, it was the men who danced mainly the hula. But now, you know, the um, colonizers came over. It was sexy for the women to dance it. If men danced it, it was considered homosexual, gay, because move their hips, all that kind of stuff. And so now with this new Hawaiian Renaissance that's happening, the stigma of it being homosexual or gay and being more about it, um, what is the word? Being equal but also perpetuating our culture, that is bringing more men to dance now. So. Okay, I think we have So uh, we have room for, we have time for one final question, but before we get to that question, just as a reminder, if you're here with cast and crew, please stay so that we can take photos of you uh, with your chosen cast and crew. <laughs> Looks like a Pokemon meet and greet, but um, please stay if you are with uh, a member of the cast and the crew after this final question. So our final question is, this is about um, Hawaiian BLs. Uh, somebody wanted to know what the reception was like in Hawaii because we clearly saw that people in the Philippines liked it. So what, how is it received over there? Okay, so we, as part of the community filmmaking, we had uh, a, the first showing was in West Maui and there was like 500 people. And then we had a showing in on Oahu because most of the cast members are actually from the island of Oahu. And that had like four or 500 people. Uh, and it was some similar mixed crowd of every age was uh, and people really, really, really liked it. And uh, the, actually the people who liked it the most were older people, uh, especially native, older native Hawaiian uh, and Filipinos because 
uh, th what you saw here is not something that they see. Maybe because you see lots of Philippine meals and it's like you see, you know, all of the stuff that the studios do, and it's like it's not a big deal. But there are not movies about Hawaiians from a Hawaiian point of view, and so especially for older people, uh, like you know, in their 80s and 90s, we, we did have, uh, you know. People were crying. I mean, they liked it, but they were crying because their whole life, you know, the only images that they had seen of their own people were for the American tourist experience and not basically showing their family life like a like it's just an ordinary thing or seeing their language being spoken. You know, when they when they were children, they were it was beaten out of them at school. Um, so that's that's the reception, um, and it's regardless of people's ideological perspective or religious orientation. Uh, that the BL wasn't a major uh, wasn't a major issue for people that otherwise might have an issue because of all of the other things that were shown in, in the film. So the reception has been overwhelmingly positive. People are actually upset that we're showing it in the Philippines before we're showing it to the general public in Hawaii. Uh, but they're going to have to wait till October. So um, yeah. So thank you very much. Yes, and um, yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you for attending our special premiere.